Yeah. I call the Hudson Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Thursday, eight thirty. If you order, the time is now seven o'clock. Uh, our first item, as always, is the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'd like to ask everyone to please rise. A pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States and to the republic which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As always, these meetings are recorded for audio and video. We ask so please silence your cell phones with the phone vibrates. You should not disturb the flow of me. Uh, Maps and hand sanitizer are available from the room for anybody that uh, wants or needs it. So at this point, we'll move through the approval of minutes for uh, a number of the items that have been uh, the goal of the capital for months. Um, first thing is the minutes for the March 14th special town hall meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Next is the minutes for the March 28th, 2024 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Motion by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Next is for the minutes of the April 17th uh, special meeting, which was around the uh, new building and seeking grants for such projects. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Motion by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Next is the approval of minutes for April 20th, the special workshop meeting. I guess it's a workshop meeting. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, aye. Jesse. Okay. Next is the minutes for the April 25th Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. second. Motion by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. And then we are going to table the May 25th Board of Supervisors Workshop meeting until so next month, as it is not completed yet. Um, Irene, do you have anything for the treasurer's report? Uh, no, we have upcoming general audits um, uh, in the month of June, and uh, the assistant helping me gather the data. Um, our contract with Aikens does expire this year, and we're going to be soliciting votes from uh, new auditors. When, when does that professional service contract expire? This is this is the end of year three, I believe. So I would I was on check. I'm pretty sure this is the last uh, year. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. He's he's yeah, he's, he's I, I saw him trying to get to it back there. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're good. As long as we, we have someone lined up. Yeah, <laughs> so we, have, as as we have somebody lined up with yeah. them. It's not and they're, they're doing the audit this year, so we have a bit of right. buffer between now yes. and the next time we need the yes. particular yes. It, it, It's not that maybe getting to municipal audits, there's not many agencies, they don't want to do smaller townships. Yeah. So, did you have any feedback to get any uh, proposals or emails back from the things along the rail that concept? I'll be just then again. Yeah. 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 Also, the email this time I called and left a message. Okay. Okay, so the next item would be the approval of the payment of bills for May 2018. I'll motion to approve. Second. Motion by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. At this time, anybody wishing to address the board can do so by coming up to the podium and clearly stating your name and address for the record. Uh, we also ask that you sign in the sheet that way we have the record. Uh, my name is Austin, Water Street Software. Um, I have several items. Uh, the first thing is, um, was discussed at the um meeting, Saturday meeting, um, about the painting, which I clarified and said that I was the one that painted the yellow. I am not requesting uh the board, I can continue paint. Yeah, so we have to review that because. We have to check what we can and use on and what the condition of the equipment is before we can authorize you to do. So we'll have to get back to you on that. Yeah, so we'll, okay. we'll, we'll let you know. 
Hang on. Yes. That's yeah. different things. So. No, that's no problem. Um, okay, so a reason to be brought over to for the trash. They're too heavy for me to all oh, over. There's two white ones here and black one back there. Somebody could do that for me. Um, between us or both one of us. Okay. Um this was brought up at the one MTC meeting. We would like to address it to see if we could purchase some I don't know. I were by this uh plans to stick in between the truck and alongside the fence. I would say get a quote. Our behind is clear. Uh they're saying along the in between the uh, the, the built, uh, so yeah, what I would what I would request is a quote for how much for set our device and uh, just a real simple like you have to take a Google Map picture give us a a, a line where you're proposing mm -hmm. that way we should give you a, a yay or nay on on both placement and cost. Okay, uh, I also need help with spray uh, from the spotty boards that isn't finished being mulched because. The clovers are too hard to pull and dig out. So I need spray there. And a little bit of spray down where the hand slide is. Um, I got most of it done, but the clovers are really too We need to find spray. We've got to watch what kind of weed killer we yeah. use because that's fine. Good question. Just, so yeah. so where, do, where do you want to spray around the, the, the sliding board? Where there's no mulch. Where there's no mulch. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so, is there, is there supposed to be mulch there? Or? Yeah. So before we spray it in, we see can somebody get a shovel and see if you can't dig the there's, there's no liner under there underneath your mulch. Yes. Some stuff listed it. It's it's super. Okay. And I already did some of that. We three. You're supposed to put on it before you yes. chemicals. Yeah. Before you take any action in the park, you need to discuss it with us because we are the owners of the park and we are responsible to ask. So I mean, a meeting is just fine. We appreciate that. Mulching is fine. Um, but any chemical usage, anything like that, is, is needs to be discussed with us, please. Before we go to the chemical yeah. route, I'd like to see if we can physically with yeah. the spade or a shovel. Yeah. Good, good for trying, but maybe yeah. must be. Pull everything up. Yeah. Like that. And what are we doing with all the, like you said, all those clippings that you want to put the other bag? She's at. I don't think the scout takes them. We have to take them to a dump. Like Richland. Um, well, you can bring all those. That's my trash in the case. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, one way or the other, even if we just like have a mold or not, you know, a compost pile behind the building over there, we'll get. We'll it's nice that they're taking these out of the park. Yes. But, yeah. Um, yeah, just we just need to figure out put it yeah. Yeah. Set, set the scout. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this next one I have spoken to you about, um, Peter. Yeah. The young people are requesting a chain. I looked at a talk, I was down at Big Sporting Goods, and they, they said that they don't have any stock, but go online. They're $12.99 a piece, and it's Wilson NBA Fast Chain Knit. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Sorry, I'm sorry. going to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's, it's essentially it's a penny cap. Yeah. I was just wondering if you got an agenda. I put it in the comments of like, we need to buy a couple things to the market. We just got to make sure the chain one that you buy is compatible with that. Yeah. 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 It's on a string. Like a tether. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, I'm interested if you could get one of those. I already know where they are. Um, I, I, I would say, why don't we just 
uh, rather than petty cash, do we want to just get the next of the other ball thing out of the, the private budget? Okay. Yeah. All yeah. Just do. Yeah. If you want to say, if you want to say no, I will take it back. But I'm going to call. I'm just asking you. Yeah, bring bring the receipt in. I want to be or it's my donation. Oh, okay. Well then, yeah. Don't donate it to the MTCA, and then you guys can get attached to the polls already. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wilder, not here. Second, put it up. All right. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, that's no uh, and one more thing. Uh, I was walking down here the other night up with the stand, and the railroad ties out there are really bad. Mm -hmm. And the ones down here, it's just, you know, yeah, oh, no, no. No. yeah. said so if we want me to know, no, 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 no. please, please, out. please oh, bring you. it up. Yeah, no, Jesse and I actually already looked at that. And I went out, was like, is it? Uh, yeah, I went out and I put uh, four inch lag screws in there to keep the bench attached to the wood and attached to the ground. So they're they're not in good shape, but this at least keeps it safe for the time being. Are they still in decent shape? Yeah. Okay. Well, then yeah. we'll have a look at those and see if there's one that we can strategically replace. So but it's over there, I believe, it's four by four, or six by six. Is yeah. That? I don't think it's where uh, it's No, they are. are. Aren't we? We have, have to do yeah. some, but we also things. have to watch the railroad ties because they're illegal to dispose of in certain ways and they're illegal to use in certain ways. It's on the yeah. railroad yeah. ties. No, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll, we'll look, but if we can could, we could do something about it, we can. But I, I put a stop gap in a couple of months ago just to try to keep people from like, falling off of the bleachers. It would, it would be nice to get nice cement pads in there and then put the wood down so we have something now. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's not being anchored to yeah. be a concrete footer with a ball sticking out of it, but it's right it's just because it looks on the ground right now, not being on the ball. And one more thing, reminder the two of you can you fix the little whale out there? <laughs> Yeah. The other day, that when we came. Yeah, I just didn't get a chance to, to do it, but what you beat me to it. We just got to dig it out, set it, and fill it back in. All right, I thought maybe I'll be bigger eight show there. Yeah. Bigger on it, and then they are far walk behind. Push it. Uh, and we found it. Okay. No. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Al, can you go all what's exciting? Yeah, I think Al's like the first yep, yep, one. Yeah. No, okay. yeah. Upper part of the hill, take five main street. Uh, I got a problem with the bar out there. Play music, all freaking night long. Boom, boom. Indians sound better than that. So there's the noise ordinance. That that the noise ordinance that we have is probably the best uh, mechanism for for dealing. So if they're if they're playing loud music, the best thing to do is call the police because the police can come out and do something about it. Based on the what's funny is that we actually don't have jurisdiction to enforce that specific issue because the P PLC, the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Enforcement, enforces the noise restrictions set by Pennsylvania state law for farmers. Okay. So, so actually, yeah. um, a couple of years ago, the liquor code said that restaurants and bars cannot have any music audible uh, from the edge of their premises. Wow. Now, now that's been amended to I think it's sixty or sixty-five decibels. Okay. So the, the law, the, the standard has been reduced, and actually, the township unfortunately does not have really much jurisdiction to enforce that specific issue. But, <laughs> but you must have violated it. Can, I would encourage you to contact the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Enforcement, which is uh, part of the PSP, Pennsylvania State Police. And they should be visiting the property and enforcing that. that. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Can I ask you a question, Paul? That if you had enough residents to pay, you would to send a letter to the the school board. Yes, and, the, and, and and it's not like they. I mean, yeah, this is not. I'm not going to sit here and lie. This it's not on the top of their priority list, but they do they do study bars and restaurants for this violation. Okay. So it's it something that they do. Again. This is a winter time. Yeah. And so, yeah. It's yeah. a pain in the ass because you want to have the windows over. Yeah. 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 Now, you can hear which bar? Uh, which bar? Which bar? Is that the right one? Yes, there's always a lot. Just how far away is it from your property? It's, yeah. um, it's, close it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty close to him, but I will tell you right now that I can hear it at 73 Main Street, which is pretty darn oh, far away. I can hear it up here. I can hear it at my house. Yep. Yep. I feel your pain. So I guess. So you can get that address and phone number to contact, then we can uh, we can help you out as best as we can too. And if there's other residents that want to complain, if there's multiple phone so calls. Yeah. 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 Multiple phone calls, then if you want to sit inside, you can enjoy it. We can, we, we, can, we can reach out to the extent that our correspondence falls on deaf ears, and then we'll contact the PLC. Yeah, so Al, I, I have a number here for you then. I'll, I'll get it to you at the end of the night for the. Okay. Let's uh, <clears throat> talk about the roads here. Okay, let's, let's talk about it. We got so much traffic going on through this road here. Main Which Street. Street? Yeah. It's for that. Watch the milk trucks come up here, go all the way down and almost down to the woman's store to get milk. They should. You should not be allowed to come down through the town. Same way all these landscaping people coming down there. One after another. And man, it just banging the hell out of the roads. So it's a, it is a public road. And right now there are no restrictions on any class of traffic on that road. So unless we put something that says like no trucks or pursuit. Then we got to yeah, and that's something that we can take into consideration as advisors. But as to why they're doing it. No, I would think that other than it's a uh, cutaway from 422, but I don't know why you would get off there's, 422 to get back. There's, there. there's some private owned houses down at trucks. Yeah. And they have bring their trailers home. So yeah. I so I think some of that is that. Um, sorry, that okay. We're getting a lot of, we're getting a lot of extra contractors here with uh, toilet acres construction. And then I also see a lot of trucks down Main Street. So I, I yeah. 100% agree with that. A yeah. lot of them are going 45, 50. And they're not going to be able to stop. Kind of speed. Hang on, is it got the little piece of bare bone? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. The tables. That's what we're going to, and then we'll work. That's what it's out. Yeah. Got to work. Yeah. This we'll take it under your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just just yeah. 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 Mind here, real quick. You want to start the tables briefly? The fire uh, workshop mm -hmm. and this the meeting yeah. before that. So. If you can kind of give us an idea where ski tables would be most effective on the main road here, that might be another ski calling type of uh, uh, intervention. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Any, any options are appreciated, but yeah. uh, that is something that we can we can look at. Out. We had talked about that once previously, as yeah. well, limiting it to like class two traffic, but. You know, they come through there like, like they some kid comes across the road, then I and dog. Yeah, I can agree. Yeah. I just get a cat, a dog. Yeah, yeah even, even an adult, if they walk out, they're not yeah. paying mm -hmm. attention to that. The park's not going to stop for them any easier. But their dogs would be able to look up in one street and swallow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, people get some racket, but the accidents happen. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I don't disagree with you. It's, it's something that we'll, we'll look into how best to action. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, maybe it's next on the sign sheet. Dan Fine. Dan, do you want to come up? Yes, or do you want to defer until we get to? I am, I'll do it first. So we'll get to the uh, video. Sorry. Okay. Jim? Jim, Jim, do you have a uh, comment? I can talk about something, something we haven't heard yet. Um, and I told him that I think I remember one I had to hear. It's so probably. Some folks would probably do that. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about is two, two, two of many items. The first is quite simply, um, and Fred did a 
an illustration. I'll give Peter and you can share that with the, the whole group. And it speaks to the parking lot at the clubhouse. There has been no where for supply, and now the adhesive core is damaged so, on the clubhouse. So it was never, the top core was never applied to the parking lot. Yeah, it was the bond beliefs on that. I don't think so because they, okay. they haven't made that. I guess this is long down to my, my I don't know if there was a bond on there. There typically would be any time to turn off improvement on uh, parking lots, roads. Uh, there, there is financial security of some sort, whether it's a bond or an escrow, uh, and they would not be released until that final wearing force is down. And you typically have somebody come here. To observe the construction before they put that where you push down. Oh, Stan was saying what we're looking for. Um, the second thing is don't take anything that I say about the fire suppression system uh, is repaired. I stand where I originally stood with the altar to be standing in the time. That's a very sound, good stand for an agricultural development. We are not. We were those, but we are not an agricultural developer. What we are is 55 plus natural gas development with 214 homes, over 400 people residing in it. And what I mentioned to you Saturday is going to bring it to you now. Not that I, I, there's nothing you can do that would fix that for me. I still rest where it was. Good people, volunteers leading forward, made a bad decision. And I'll illustrate that with one point. The development code that was in effect at that day speaks to the fire chief being able to move wet items, not dry items. But he could move wet items so long as it doesn't exceed 500 feet. And we are well beyond 500 feet from any wet item in the development. Um, the correction, or well, the examination of that point at this point. Um, is required, will require, uh, and the engineer might be able to answer this better than I. Fred said that it, it's a geo certified engineer has to do an examination of the farm, and that will give you some yeah. time because I don't, I don't think they're on every corner. It's, it's not at the workshop, yet. he's just catching yeah. up every day. So at some point, if you want to have some of patients, like. Yeah, I mean, and just yeah. a, a really quick recap from Mike. The, the pond that is fire suppression suffers from a couple of critical deficiencies. The first one being is it's now leaking, it's not holding water. The second being is that there are two dry pipes there that they are unable to get sufficient to walk through because of the, the state of the pond. It clogs up the, the bumper truck with algae and fish, uh, snails, <laughs> everything else that they can't get the kind of draw that they need out of it that there was an event. So the, the pond there would be functionally useless for fire. So, you know, again, we haven't really spawned money for that because it's not been made to you guys or anything like that. So there is still financial security there, but concern the homeowners is less about the, the, the fiscal component of it and more about the public saving. So it really comes down to what team we have to be able to force some sort of remedial action, which uh, I won't put anything uh, forward, so I don't want to put my foot in my mouth, that's more of a, a Ian Collin question, but um, I think our, some of our options are limited until they try to initiate like bond reduction. And that's where we can say, no, you have not met the things that are spelled out specifically in the plan. Um, doesn't really help them in the meantime, but um, that's kind of the state of things where we're, where we're at to give you a 30 second synopsis. Okay. Yeah, I, I would just ask, in, in keeping with that, halfway through this project, this is a five year project that is now 10 years late, but halfway through it, the board at the time discontinued giving building on the premise that they needed to submit and fix the problem that they created with moving drive hydrants from the original plan. So holding them to fuel to a standard, you got to hold them to the original plan. There's been no new plan. I asked if it was Saturday and everybody gave the same single salute yeah. that, that I have. You don't have the question unless you know the answer. There hasn't been an amendment. 
plan, the plan state how the thing is to be done, and it has to be dewatered to get to the sediment at the basement. And I've got these certifications for the from the plans. And I'll leave you, and I won't bore you with too much. Food. What I need to have you do is act as a board in the interim with your new emergency uh, supervisor to review a plan that, that landmark should present you post state. And that's not ending any money, but there, there are 400 people now depending on a flawed fire suppression system. Um, are we able to make contact with Stone Group around concerns that we have around safety for that? Like, are we, I mean, obviously we're probably okay to do that, but like, do we, is there a process that we need to follow? Let's, right. Let's take it under advisement. Yeah. I want to review the improvements agreement, the MPC, and what you know, rights and abilities you may have to, to mandate uh, improvements or repairs to this pond. Do it ourselves. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, I would want to know what we have in terms of uh, actionable items there, but just a simple letter saying, hey, we, we have concerns that have come to us. And you, as the developer, please review your the pond situation at the Stone Rock development. Um, not threatening anything or putting anything in there, but just kind of the, the opening gambit of, hey, you're aware of the problem, you want to make sure you're aware of it too. But I, I think it's absolutely critical that, like you said, we review the NPC, the improvement to the plan, and find out where we actually have lights to stand on. If it push comes to shove. So it would have to be a written plan, a published plan. By published, I mean to all the players in that plan. Um, there was never a written plan. It was presented to our development. Correct me if I'm wrong. Any plan that it's fair to Yeah, so like it, it's, not, it's not something that can be done clandestinely. It, it would have to go to a ringer of things and be properly reported. Otherwise, it's not. It's, it's not reported in there. Yeah. And, and the, the problem with that is, is that directly then, there are, is there any people? No. no, 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 no. I'm going to guess there are at least a half dozen players in that thing. So, God forbid there is a gas fire that starts in Stone Rock, and one of those off shows up first. If they don't have a written plan that says we're not going to use the pawn until it's corrected, they may do it and clog. That affecting not only Stonecroft Village, but Wolves. Because yep. their defense just went down. Their pumper is now clogged. And when Myers County or when uh, Marion Township gets there, they may do the same thing. They may do the same thing. Or Newmanstown, or I don't know who where the mutual is. It's got to be written, it's got to be published to all the players. And then the right thing to do from the Pentecost point of view would be you got to exercise that at once. Success to a standard. You're going to be there in such a time. You're going to execute the first drop of water in such a time. And and uh, everybody shows up. And get, it gets a go or no go great. Or to be an effective plan. Protectors. That needs to happen to protect 400 people. Now, and it's not just 100 people. Like I said, if somebody gets there early and they haven't got the written plan that says, leave the damn pond alone yeah. until it's fixed. All the flags in the world in that 10 seconds that you got to make this in an emergency could go very, very bad. So I would ask that the board get on that that process with the new EMC manager. We have John make contact with the fire company. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually just texted him about that. Once they know about it, that they're they're going to address it. And I want to say I'm Pretty sure they're aware of it at this point, but yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll make it a very short sure thing. Right. It's useful. This is, is minimal to none. It's, it's the purview of the fire department. It's when it goes beyond, you know, some yeah. house fire or something where he's pulled in to commit other resources. But yeah, he's, yeah, like, just, he's, he's got, he's a good liaison. But absolutely. He gets struck. Yeah. Yeah, he does training with them. So, yes. Absolutely. I am available and will provide him any assistance for the instruction. I've done this half dozen times in the world. And it's, it's really important this time. We, last time we didn't do that, but we have 150 people. Now we have 400. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of them.
I showed a number of folks here at the Saturday workshop what the division of the ponds look like, why the water's going down, and I also showed them the pictures of the catfish that were sucked up into the dry hydrants and the pumper truck. And Steve Weaver, who I understand is now the fire chief. Yes. That's right. Yes. He said the test failed. But I would like to show the engineer and the attorney what these pictures look like. This is currently what the pond looks like. Yes, so, Jesse, you didn't see him either. Yeah, my, I had a bunch of pictures that I showed to our engineer earlier, yeah. and yeah, not, now it's part of the thing. Out of water. It, it, it's just draining right out of the bottom. You can see a dry area, a moist area, and a bottom. And it's just, it's just running up. And then we have this, which is a curly type of weed that's growing out of the setup in the bottom of the pond that can prevent any more from being drawn out of this pond. This pond is totally inoperable. Steve came to do a test. He couldn't get it. Ten minutes he had to shut it up come back or he learned it up. We understand. I got it there. So our concern is that pond. Yes. That's our life support. Without that, we're in big trouble. I yeah. agree with you. And I, I did follow up, and Chuck was going to work on it. And, uh, so now we got to get it. It's got yeah. speed. Yeah. With, well, whose engine was it that that showed the picture of the catfish in it? That was Mary in Township Spunker from. That was on April the 16th, if okay. I'm not mistaken. I was there when they did it. And when they took the hose off, they had to pull the catfish out of the screen of the dry tiger and the baby catfish out of the screen. So, you know, we like to fish that pond out. I ain't put, I'm not putting nothing in that pond right now. No. Not the way it seems. So, and especially since it's leaking. And Jim, if you don't mind, then I'll make sure that uh, the fire chief has your numbers to contact you. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. And do you do you have his numbers? I have those numbers right uh, for, for the company. fire departments. Do you have the fire chief's number? I do not have the new fire chief's number. Okay. Okay. I'll call John to reach out to him. And if, if you guys don't mind, I'll pass along your numbers to him. Yeah. Okay. okay. We did have a uh, gentleman uh, from Aquatic Environment Consultants. He looked the pond over, he searched high and low. His first comment was the pond appears to be losing water rapidly. So he went all the way to the pond. He went down into the culvert to see where the runoffs are. Oh, right. So this pond is not leaking water externally into so it's permeating into the ground. We also have a muskrat problem that doesn't help. So yeah, those little critters can can tear into a bank and dig channels everywhere. So that's another issue that since the pond doesn't belong to us. It should be something that landmark is addressed. Now, I don't know if we need to call the Fish and Wildlife Department. I, I had already called the Fish and Wildlife Commission. And what did they say, Jesse? There is permitting and guidance available for being able to basically remove your algae and fish in that pond chemically with permit through them. 
So effectively, they'll help you fix the problem, but there's not anything jurisdictionally they can do to go after. Right. And so their concern, right, and their concern is, is also the bottle life around it. So there's a safe way to do it without killing everything around it. And of course, then it comes down to who's going to pay for that, right? Exactly. And then that's where, was, that's where I was going when I was talking to Chuck about was who's responsible for this now that Bob does it long well, well, right. So that's what he was going to try to look into and, and see what he needed to do to work that. And then well, he left. Part, part of the idea of having financial security is that the township can draw upon it if the developer refuses to complete the municipal improvements to satisfaction. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so hopefully it doesn't reach that point, but it is an option that we could explore if if this <clears throat> act in response to any correspondence that we sent. Yeah, and, and so and so myself and Michael will be evaluating our options and, and determining what's what to do next. Okay. Yeah. They don't communicate with the bus, so I, hope I, they, I, I get that. Yeah, and then they don't communicate with you. Be the So we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay. Uh, final thing. Uh, the seventy four concrete markers <laughs> that were supposed to be put in the ground by. Landmark and their surveyors, and that's why they're requesting a reduction right. in bond money. If someone can go out there and show me marker number five, no, we're not or there's, there's there's only ten. There were only ten that were on the plan that they said that they saw. We were not able to find any of those ten. However, they did request the bond, and I recommend a denial of that bond based off the fact that nothing was installed. Thank you. Yep. I know where there's four, but yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do we have anybody else signed down on public comment? Okay, um, Lisa, for the record, we have uh, Peter Wallace and Ryan Allgaier on the Zoom. Uh, they have been keeping an eye on the chat. They haven't put anything in the chat. Uh, so uh, just note that uh, they're also in attendance for Okay, moving into the main items for the agenda, uh, we have a couple of announcements. Uh, the first one is, if you haven't already done so, uh, make sure that you get your septic system pumped. Uh, there is a list of the registered pumpers that are available to do the pumping and the inspections uh, available upon request. Um, a number of places are already registered, like a good number of places in the area are already registered and it's very easy to... But if the pumper is registered, please ask them to call the office to get registered. You can use whomever you want. Please ask them to get registered. There's a, a tracking system that our sewer um, enforcement officer is utilizing currently. Uh, next, kind of around that same sort of thing, and the care of septic systems and other uh, systems. Uh, we are going to be having an educational meeting here at the Marion Township building. We're still working on deciding the date with Piper Terra for that, uh, but we'll be doing a, a series of these throughout the course of the year. Your homeowners know how to best take care of their systems. Uh, we are also are still accepting letters of support around trying to get grants for everything and anything related to the Act 537 situation that we're in. Um, just to reiterate the same message that I made at the special meeting. You don't have to be in favor of the system. I'm I'm not in favor of it either, but you can express that discontent, but still say that you are in favor of trying to seek grant opportunities wherever possible to help you pay any costs that you may have with it. So when is the deadline for that? So there, there's not really a hard deadline. There's a series of grants that we're going after. Okay. Um, I think one of them is July, if I'm not mistaken. There is there is one coming up and I'll 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 call him tomorrow and ask her and that way I can pass it along to you Dan. But um, these are things that we can keep in our pocket for uh, various grant opportunities. I went your approval of our yes we showed you Saturday. Yes, thank you. Yes, and maybe we'll start drinking and start selling. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate every every bit of help that we can get. And at the end of the day, we're not going to be able to do this without grants. And we've made that abundantly clear. Um, any of the conversations that we've had with the department and the special study also reiterates that that we understand the, the legal obligation that we are in presently. We may not like it, but we understand the situation and. We're going to do what we can to comply. However, when time comes to put shovel in the ground, if we don't have enough grants, 
we simply can't do it. We have to we have to have that discussion at that point. Um, but again, back to grant letters. Um, every every opportunity that we can take, we can take it so far, and we have gotten uh, so far pretty much everything paid for the plans. The initial studies, all the survey, pouring, all of that has been satisfied by grants that we've gotten from one, one agency or another. So we are doing our absolute best. Tiger Terra has been an excellent partner in, in helping us seize those opportunities, but we're, we're doing everything we can as a board to make sure this is as minimally difficult as possible at every step of the way for everyone. So, uh, first that, uh, which is a good segue from this from CI 537, um, we did submit a special study uh, around going from the uh, gravity fed system over to a low pressure system. This was accepted by the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, they approved this without any major comments. They only had a couple of stipulations around the, the requirements for water quality management permits for certain steps of the construction and operation, um, and that the approval of the special study does not constitute approval of the design. The design is a totally different stage. Um, but they did accept the study as, as written, which did include language around uh, this being entirely dependent on sufficient grant funding. So that is a, a very, very positive thing from, from our standpoint. Um, engineer, solicitor, or the other supervisors, do you have anything that you want to add to that point? We'll move on to the next slide. Okay. Uh, the next is one of the grant opportunities. This is the local share LSA grant for 2023. This was important to us for the design component. Uh, we received $69,570 uh, for the work that was completed. And to, to be a reimbursed spanning from March 26th, 2024 uh, through July 30th, 2027. Uh, Irene and Kim are currently working on this, but this will help uh, fund the next stage of what we are required to do by state law and association with the Act 537. Sewage management program related items. Uh, C2C was out doing survey work at the beginning of May. Annual online maintenance uh, that we were talking about earlier is. Uh, Realistically, it will be June 20th at uh, 7 p.m. here at the Township Building. Hydro Terror will be proposing letters, which will get printed out and mailed, uh, to send out to the residents uh, with these special meeting details, dates, and times. So keep an eye out for that if you're interested in attending. Uh, this will go over kind of the ins and outs of uh, what the online maintenance system consider, uh, online management uh, ordinance consists of, and how best to take care of your online system. Uh, we will be looking for quotes around that and then get some JDM and everybody else about printing so we can mail that out. Uh, Mike. Yes. Uh, so I got in, uh, I talked to Scott McCree today, uh, the SEO, and he said that Hydro Terra had requested or suggested that he be at the, the June 20th meeting. Uh, that, I, want I think that's an excellent idea. I don't know if that's necessarily something we need a motion to allow him to be there, but I'll, I'll make it. Yeah, it's a public meeting. So, yeah, I, I don't know that it needs to be motion either, but I, I just wanted to make sure that that was something you were on board with. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. There's no better person really to ask about so much questions than the SEO. Okay, uh, next is the new building proposal. We met at a uh, special meeting with Olson Design Studio where they presented a plan and we reviewed some ins and outs of that. Um, we are going to be pursuing Senator Casey's discretionary funding and COVID-19 ARPA grant. Uh, we submitted the grant application, so we're just waiting to hear back. Again, this is another project that is solely contingent on grants. If we can't get them to grants, we can't do it. But we need to do something uh, as the building is starting to literally fall down in some spots. So uh, anybody that is, is curious about any of the details on that, uh, either the new building or the state of the old building, the building we're in right now, uh, if you see any one of us, we'd be happy to talk to you about it. We'll take you on the tour. Yeah, so we'll give you a great tour. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the future planning. Uh, this is kind of our, our path forward planning initiative that we want to start doing. Um, essentially, we want to put things that can be done, should be done, would like to be done in a five to 10 year plan broken down by a priority. And uh, what I suggested was three categories, uh, beautification, efficiency, and capability. So. My thinking, and feel free to, to add, change, or revise on that, is any anything that we would do fall principally into those three categories. It's either something that is 
uh, community outreach, beautification, sign, banners, benches, whatever. Um, efficiency in terms of making something that we already do better or improve capabilities in case of the building for adding and things that we can do and offer as a, as a township. So the, the first step to this is jot down literally everything you can think of, whether it's uh, redoing the park, the building, getting bus service back into town, um, putting planters along Main Street, putting up banners, whatever. Jot it down. Let's get it organized and figure out where we can start to realistically fit these things in from a, a dependency standpoint, so that things are going to require other things first, and from a, a cost standpoint, make sure we can fit it into the budget every year. So, yeah. And this, this thought of um, what would we like to see to improve our community, um, I did reach out to the high school and uh, to see maybe if we could get a committee together also that would involve some of the high school students to see what they would like to events in town. Uh, they gave me a little, the, the teachers gave me a little bit of feedback, I guess, Mortarsville. The library runs a lot of team related events that applies more to the Conrad Wiser students. Because um, I know like Bumble's well, doesn't do as much as they used to. So again, just finding out what people would have an interest in doing here. So just to keep in mind, this is just planning, 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 planning to see once we have a, a concrete plan to see how we can move forward with implementing these plans, but we have to have a plan in place essentially. Yeah. And yeah. if people in the community have suggestions, please shoot us yeah. an email, give us a call or anything like that. Like I know, uh, Dan, I think you would actually request something with, uh, like one of the courts become a pickleball court. Yeah. Things, things yeah. like that. Like if you have thoughts or ideas that we, we may not think of, send it our way. Yeah. 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 And that's yep. more yep. turning it into something yep. that you. Uh, and I'm just using that as an example. But if there's anything else that you guys think of, or you know people that they make a suggestion and pass, pass it along to us, that way we're aware of it too. Just so slide going back to the public comments that you made, John just texted me. The chief is going to be over in about 15 or 20 minutes. If you guys would like to speak to him, if you want to speak to him in the hallway, you can. He's, he's coming over to speak to you guys. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the, the, the chief, uh, chief, chief, chief Weaver will be here in 15, 20 minutes to talk to you guys if you can step out and talk. Sure. Um, okay. Uh, next is the proposed short term rental ordinance. At last month's meeting, we had made a motion to advertise the ordinance. Uh, this was uh, advertised in which? So oh, this was this ordinance was advertised in the writing on May 20th. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have the date for that. Uh, we will need a motion to adopt the ordinance and uh, adopt resolution 2024-11 for fees uh, and uh, application tips. Uh, so I'm going to do this, Lisa, in two pieces. I'm going to make a motion to adopt the uh, short-term rental ordinance. That's the, first, that's the first motion on the table. Motion by Peter, second by Irene. Correct. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Deputy. Aye. Okay. Second piece is that I'm going to make a motion to adopt resolution 2024 11 around the fees and application. Second. Motion by Peter, second by Jesse. Correct. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Deputy. Aye. Okay. Very good. Um, if we have a, a copy of that ready for signature, Colin, I'll sign that tonight. Okay, next is the proposed long term rental inspection ordinance and fee schedule. Uh, Colin uh, suggests that we pass this ordinance after the short term one and that it should mimic the short term uh, as closely as possible for easy enforcement. Uh, you and I have chatted that based on the fact we don't have any provisions on that. Is that ready for advertisement? Let me let me bring it to next month's meeting okay. one more time. Okay. We'll do a final review okay. and authorize for that to be at the July. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, I also just as a side note, the this this whole thing, I do still want to pursue any of the, the joint zoning related items that we could potentially leverage. Um, it seems like there was uh, some potential interest from some of the other municipalities who brought it up at the last meeting. But I kind of want to want to see where they they land next time we have a meeting based on kind of where they where they ended up with it after being able to set the thing on it for one day. Um, okay, next is the 4050 Conrad Weiser Parkway. Um, 
I really do want to. Okay, I, I don't have any updates yeah. other than I did reach out to Craft Code. Um, to see if we could coordinate a time with the police department to go over there just to have a conversation and see if the us take a look around with permission. If not, we may have to pursue other options. So, uh, gentlemen, if you want to speak, yeah, yeah, I mean, sure if we were seat down the hallway, okay. Hey. Okay. Let's say go film that come out to you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the uh, the other item on that is uh, the bar next to that. Yeah. Um, they started constructing a deck. Yep. Went all over that front. Um, so the uh, uh, <laughs> what we will need to do, based on my understanding, this is we need to have craft issue a stop order. Okay. That's that's right. done already. I said, yeah, I spoke them. So that that's been done, and yeah. <laughs> What was that? Just like, uh, actually, like, they're for any reason. I don't understand your question. So, like, I was just wondering if we could ask any of his concerns about the way that's positioned in front of that building. Oh, the, de the deck itself is, is, is a no go. So, it's not permitted. And, and my understanding from, from just a brief conversation with Colin is, it probably has to be removed, period, and conceived. So that's probably not permitted. Right. And there's mm -hmm. laws that are around drinking out in front of a bar um, that they have to comply with. And they probably don't have the necessary terms, but we don't know. So mm -hmm. so that's that's a big no-no. Because so, I'm also worried, because it looks like the, the porch has a huge privacy fence around it, right? And, and I would be worried for our folks to approach that. Right. If that it was full of Yes. Yeah, so, so here, here's here's the law. Right? The building code requires a permit to be told for a commercial deck, okay? which is different than a residential deck, which doesn't need a permit. Right? We have no obligation to issue a permit for this deck so long as there are other code violations that then can follow. So until until those code violations are remediated, our satisfaction is that we have. Well, no, no death permit. No, there, there, there will be no death permit, yeah. and it must be removed. Okay, well, I don't know. Grab's already on, on the case, too. So, I have to issue the stop order today. Um, but I, I, when I spoke to the lady in the office, Glenn wasn't available, so she said he would be the one that have to look for all the other legal aspects of it. But I'm sure he's familiar with it to a certain extent. If not, he can reach out to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And, and we'll keep a good loop we'll on us. Yeah. Okay. Why, 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 why don't you ratify the code enforcement officer issuance of stop for the debt being public property? Okay. I'll make a motion to ratify the issuance of the stop work order by craft codes to 4050 Conrad Weiser Parkway. Their deck and, 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 and authorize any, any and all of their actions to, okay. to properly. Do you, do you be able to tap that on the end there, or should I do that? Yeah, so it's like going to be two motions or one, 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 one motion, okay. one really long motion. And I'll, and I'll second right away. <laughs> motion by Peter, second like, by like, Desi. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Harry, aye. Desi, aye. Okay. It's for if, it's for recording purposes as well as the video yeah. for that phone. No, it's yeah. also part of the year. So you're saying that I'm sorry, saying, sorry, you need to say your name and your address and everything. Oh, it's yeah, the right uh, street. Thank you. <clears throat> so you're saying that because they didn't get a permit for the deck, that you will not approve them for a deck. But, no, no, no. What we're saying is they didn't pull a permit for the deck, so they can't pull the deck. But okay. beyond that, they have other codes violations that have to be remedied before a permit could be issued. The tap the township has no obligation to issue permits for a property that has other violations outstanding. Okay, so you can refuse that. Yes. So once, let me just get this straight. So once you already told them that they can build a deck and have to tear it down, then they can reapply. For a debt permit, but you guys refuse it because there's no right. 
Yeah, if they were hypothetical, I just want to make sure I don't get specifically as it relates to the electrical components of the problem. Yeah, you get there, they're blatantly they have compliance with it. I, I was wondering, so when I brought on it every day, so. yeah, so yeah. conceivably, just as a hypothetical, if they remedy all of those other code violations, then they absolutely could apply for a permit, we could issue a permit, but they can't get a permit. While they have stuff that's flaring me wrong. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, next is the Western Birch Joint Zoning uh, Ordinance. Uh, this is about the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm, farm animals. Uh, the meeting uh, we had, that was this one, right? Correct. It seems like so long ago. Um, we discussed that. Two weeks, and, yeah, yeah. two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Long time. Um, we discussed that and uh, we're moving forward with adopting that purely for Mary Township. Correct. And the uh, the next meeting will be the official uh, hearing for that change. And that's going to be on July 18th at 7 p.m. at the Heidelberg Township. <laughs> so, Jesse, I put it on your calendar. Make sure you're there because you're a remote delegate. Uh, Irene, if you're able to attend, always good to have a third just in case it comes up from here, Jesse. But, I, uh, I want to apologize for that. I, I, I completely yeah. forgot about it. Let, let me be clear. The amendment will not be enacted unless we have a far reach governing body there at that meeting. Please, so, please, please, please. That was my fault. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Property maintenance issue on 660 Canal Road. Uh, this is that building that is owned by ATT. Uh, Glenn from Kraft was going by to take a look at it on the 16th, and I uh, believe we were trying to make one last so, contact. So just. Uh, as, as an update or refresher, I had advised Kraft to send a TNP a final demolition notice because the last one we had sent a few months ago was mailed to their old corporate office in New Jersey. So I had Kraft mail the final demolition notice to the new corporate office in New Jersey as well as our headquarters in the Dallas, Texas. And the 30 day period to act upon that notice expired. So I had when go visit the adjoining properties and have them sign consent. They weren't home until my office has sent out those letters seeking the town, seeking consent for the township to enter the property to inspect the shed, get the load, and do the demolition work. Okay. Once, once those consent letters are signed, um, I think we need to uh, get a quote from Quotes or bid or bids mm -hmm. from contractors to do that work, and then potentially think about also pulling uh, an administrative warrant against ATT for that work as well. Okay. So the, the, the process is continuing to move forward. It will probably be another few months before we have all the ducks in a row to actually remove the ship. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, next, the Stone Crawl on fire suppression. Um, talked about that briefly during the uh, public oh. comments period. Uh, fire Chief Weaver is actually out the hallway right now talking with some of the residents of Stone Crawl. Um, this is something where we have to figure out exactly how to navigate uh, short term tactical solution as well as the strategic long term solution for this. Um, and uh, there will be additional discussion around that involving both the engineers time being. I don't think we have any the ocean oil. Okay, uh, next, the Stone Crofts uh, uh, developer has made a request for the release of uh, $19,397.25. Uh, this was for 74 proposed concrete monuments, uh, less than 10 were actually installed, and uh, from what the engineer has passed along, none of them were able to be located. So uh, the recommendation is that we do not approve the reduction. Um, I'll make a motion to uh, deny the request for uh, the release of $19,397.25 for the 74 proposed concrete monuments to Stone Rock. I'll second it. Motion made by Peter, second by Desi. Roll call, Peter. Aye. I mean, Chai, Desi. Aye. Okay. 
Uh, next is the CWP-LD. This is 37 Main Street. This is for units. Uh, Brian Hedeker has requested a release of escrow money to the amount of $71,187. Uh, Engineer Bing has uh, approved this release, so I'll make a motion to release $71,187 of escrow money. To your, just before we make that yes. motion, yes. Uh, there was some correspondence with Brian uh, yeah. Kotbacker uh, for sending that uh, letter. Okay. Uh, he had mentioned that in previous releases, Chuck had released 10% uh, contingency. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's, it's really up to the township whether they want to or not. However, because it's been done in the past yeah. and there is still plenty of financial security left, I'm recommending that we do also include that 10%, which would bring the total up to $78,305. Okay, thank you. I, I was not aware of that. So I'll... Just as a, as a point of clarification, yes. obviously the whole 10% is not released. It's proportional to the amount being released. Yeah. That's actual security. Yeah. Okay, so I'll... I'll... Amend my motion slightly to the amount of seventy-eight thousand three hundred and five dollars uh, as a release of escrow money for the storage units on Thirty-Seven Main Street. Second. Motion made by Peter. Second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jensen. Aye. Oh, it looks nice. It looks okay. Nice. Um, yeah. Okay. Next is the property damage from snowplows. Um, Based on the fact that this is an unavoidable back to life sometimes, uh, we are putting together uh, a protocol around how to properly lodge and take complaints and just make sure we have a nice streamlined process that if something does happen, it's important. Um, Al was kind enough to let me know before the meeting that uh, Coach went and took care of the damage that was there. So if it happens, uh, the biggest thing is just let us know. Sometimes when you're driving a plow truck in the middle of a snowstorm, you don't know if you flip somebody's lawn or something like that, and you, you may not see it. So um, if it happens, let us know if something went wrong. We obviously want to do everything in our power to make it work. So uh, one thing that we will need to follow up with, Colin, if you want specifically if there's any requirements or anything like that that we need to have in terms of photos or items or forms uh, around uh, when residents report damage. Um, that's obviously it's not, hopefully not going to snow anytime. <laughs> anytime real soon, otherwise we have bigger problems. But uh, we want to make sure that we have something in place before the, the next winter season. Uh, so we're ready for that. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll start to think about it. Okay, thank you. I think we did come up with a proposed form. Did you guys come up with a form? I, I think Val came up with something. Yeah. yeah well, let's just make sure that Colin. Obviously, like share it with us too. I don't know that I'm not going to see yeah. the finished draft of that, but uh, let's make sure Colin has it that way. He has something to, to kind of uh, expense and support against. Uh, next is road maintenance. Uh, we are going to be uh, doing a revisit and revise our five year maintenance plan to get roads fixed and maintained and on a preventative cycle as much as possible, mm -hmm. over cleaning, et cetera. Um, However, we need to temper that with the fact that our, our budget is not limitless. So uh, our roadmaster is working on documenting folder locations, conditions, et cetera. Uh, we are going to be working with uh, Engineer Bingley on uh, the USGIS, uh, or it's called GIS around cataloging and certain things that we call this. With our current budget, less, uh, 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 you know, multiple snowstorms, we're looking at being able fiscally to do like a five to six hundred hundred thousand dollar project every four to five years. Yeah. So it's 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 letting the money sit there and accumulate, and then we're able to do these larger projects, which in some ways really isn't bad. Yeah. Um it it you know it puts us, I think, a little bit ahead of other townships in that respect area, but it it it's just it's the money. Yeah. It's the money. So you know, on average, we get about $150,000 back. Um, what did eat up some of our budget previously, I would say a bad year would have been like ten to $50,000 with snow, but, but we're not seeing those winters anymore. So, yeah. Yeah, we also obviously any grant opportunities yeah. possible we go after. We have a couple of projects prepared. Yes. Uh, that Chuck had completed them. There are a couple that were in progress. 
Uh, yeah. That way they're application ready yeah. for certain brands. Yes. Yeah. And Mike did tell us about there's a somewhat new-ish product to use on roads, which may help uh, lengthen the, the lifespan for any road, you said three to five years. So yeah, it's it's, a, it's called fog sealing. And it's it's similar to chip seal, except instead of just tar and chip, it's got a fog seal on top, which makes it a more finished product. It appears more like a regular roadway. Okay. Very good. Okay. Uh, next, kind of on that same series of things, is cold patch. Um, the road crew received 8.6 tons to patch potholes. Total cost was $1,255.60. Uh, we need to essentially approve the purchase of more cold patch if they go past uh, above and beyond what we've already previously approved. So, um, have we taken all like eight loads of cold patch that we had approved previously, Butch? Or what do you? What do you call a like a, a dump truck full? A dump truck or a little. Yes, we're splitting hairs here. Um, I guess the I guess the big dump truck if we want to. Well, we didn't even use the big one. We used we went and used the small one. Okay. Well, how, how uh, many? Like uh, we we got four 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 little ones of uh, which was. Uh, 250 tons. So I, uh, uh, I talked with Kevin Saturday uh, last night, and uh, and uh, it won't happen this Saturday. He, he can only help me on Saturday. And uh, and uh, we, I do want to get a a small load in two and a half tons, and uh, should about do do what? Unless something turns up, there's there's some right spot that like I, I can have you. Yes. Yeah. What I'll I'll motion is to approve the road crew to purchase uh, up to another eight point six tons of their four loads um, uh, of pulp patch. Second. Another motion. question? Motion on the table. Uh, motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, you need to set out first? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> very, very brief intermission. Uh, I'm putting this on a minute, Lisa. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm putting this in a minute. <laughs> Um, you so she's a good time. Yeah, she wants to buy it. She needs four of your one, eight of your one. Yeah, those other minutes from uh, the meetings past, so that's like two months. There will be time for the rest of the past. Next one, yeah. Works. Can you do one? Yeah. If you need more, you know, 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 you Okay. Good. Okay. So, uh, jump right back into it. Uh, everybody, so if you have a conversation, we ask that you please take it out. 
uh, into the hallway. Uh, next on the agenda is the Wintersville Road Culvert. This is the, the one closest to 3820 Wintersville Road. Uh, we authorized in February to finish the design. Um, we'll need a motion to accept the design and advertise it out to bid. Um, Mike, was that sent over to us? Uh, no, it was not. So this past month, there was uh, hydraulic analysis of the site, a survey of wetlands, and a uh, wetland delineation report. Uh, so we are currently working on the design. I'd say it's probably 95% there. Okay, so we'll have it for next month's board supervisor. Right That's what I would expect. Okay. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Okay, next, the road project for this year is Sharon and Road South, William Penn Boulevard to the Lebanon County line. We made a motion at last month's meeting to advertise the drainage roadway improvements. The design is nearly complete. Did SD get that finished? Is that ready for committing? That is another one that is right there. It's okay. 95%. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, next is the guide rails. Uh, we made a motion at last month's meeting to authorize bidding for William Penn Boulevard and Free Road. Uh, there was an ad in the Reading Eagle on Wednesday, the 22nd, and uh, the 23rd. And the 28th, uh, bids seed will be open on June 24th, um, along with the bids that we received for the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive and Main Street. Uh, this was also advertised on the 20th and 24th and will be unsealed on the 23rd. Uh, tree trimming. Um, I apologize, I didn't get a chance to call <laughs> that was that was all that was solely on me, and I'm I will take responsibility for that one. I will not need tomorrow. And see if we can't get a, uh, an appointment scheduled. Yeah. The two Bollinger Road items we will commit based on the potential for litigation around those items and move right to item 24, which is the equipment and equipment repair. Uh, the big truck had some electrical issues and was taken to Owl Creek to get fixed. Uh, this was a, a little bit of rewiring of the connector and a taillight. Uh, total for that was $303.16. The whole truck also got inspected, which was ninety dollars. Uh, we need to come up with a, a comprehensive maintenance schedule and uh, really focus on the uh, point of use, weekly, monthly, etc. Have that in the pipeline. Uh, we'll need to a motion, and I'm going to do that separately. Uh, Lisa or whoever put the minutes or the, the agenda together. Thank you for putting two lines uh, around the payment for both of those items on the truck. So the first one, I'll make a motion. The big truck, uh, to the sum of three hundred three dollars and sixteen cents for the electrical repair at Owl Creek. Second. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, aye. Cassie, aye. Okay. Second one is to approve the cost of inspection for the little truck of ninety dollars. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Peter. Yes. Uh, it's a little truck in, in the trailer. Oh, so the trailer got the trailer needs to be expected. No, it's down. That's they, they might have looked at it, but that wasn't like that wasn't part of that ninety dollars. Yeah. 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 Uh, next is the uh, tractor purchase. Uh, we've been discussing getting a subcompact tractor for maintenance on the ball field and other uh, grounds related stuff. Um, Butch tries his best at the, the full size John Deere that we have, but it's it's not easy to do when you have a piece of equipment that large. Um, so uh, Jesse got some quotes for some some things, um, various places, various uh, different options. Um, really, it looks like the one from, I guess that is Agritier, was the 16,200. Um, and you get a, an optional 60 inch motor deck for an additional 3,500. Uh, John Deere quoted 13,000 uh, or with a loader of 17,000 and some change. Um, the Auto Connect that I, I feel should be standard was another almost $2,000 extra on the John Deere, bringing that to a total of 19,000. A uh, quote from Messix uh, for a land pride or was, uh, uh, I don't think that total was right, but it says 3,750. Um, and then New Holland work master tractor loader was uh, 20,000. So some of these things would have a co-star discount. Some of these things have additional fees. 
um, we need to look at it. But the, the bottom line is uh, for next month's meeting, I would like to workshop even have each one of those things kind of side by side and look at it. Uh, because through the sale of the, the old equipment that we put out uh, ended, they are able to more or less trade that equipment for the, the new equipment that we need. Yeah. Uh, who who would, uh, was it um, Agateur was willing to do something? Agateur was willing to do something. Yeah. 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 And they're yeah. right in Richmond. Um, yeah. yeah. They, they were also the one from a Boston like, equipment standpoint. I like Agateur the best. So I just wanted to, I wanted to. Do our due diligence and look at this is what this one is, this is what all the options are. Cost okay, next one is this, next one is this, and then kind of go from there, knowing that it's it's not really an out of pocket expenditure because we sold some stuff that's quite like dust to get something new that's going to be useful, right? Right, and with all due respect, I think we should look at what we have out there with that boom lower situation and figure out what we want to do with that before we proceed spending more money. Well, I know it's two separate pieces of equipment, yeah, two separate pieces of jobs. Yeah, these blue was purchased so that I think I've been thinking about blue mowers purchased so Butch can go off and trim stuff along the roadway without having to get out of the vehicle. Because because I know this has just been a sore point because of the title issue. Um well, so Jesse and I yeah. spoke very briefly yeah. about this. It's not so much a ticket issue, it's a it's licensing thing. Yeah. yeah. And so, but that's why the blue mowers purchased yeah. in the first yeah. place. Yeah. So yeah. We should yeah. Keep the blue but the, the two things with that is, is you said when it heats up, it doesn't go in reverse. Um, and then and then the other thing that Dave had said was when you make a right hand turn with it because it's an implement that's attached on the side of it, it feels like it wants to go over. So is it safe? Is it safe? Number one. Number two, now you might need, from what I was reading with Pennsylvania state law, when you're a township and this is municipality and you're using it as a mower alongside the road, Colin yes. might be able to tell me if I'm right or wrong, but I read you need a spotter. A spotter, like a, you need a, a, a township truck with a flasher behind driving behind you as a, a fly. Well, oh, I, I, I used it. I used it right in. I don't know if it's. And it, yeah. it, it, What's that? See that in the yeah, I did, but if it's so correct, it's correct or not, or if I'm just reading it, sound, sounds out, sounds like you did that. Right, that's exactly yeah. what I said. Sound that's sounds legit. Yeah. yeah. So, do so you understand what he's saying? If you're out hunting it, you need to have someone in the little truck behind you. Yeah. 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 When you're on the road. Um, I knew it better, right? Uh, before you told me, I can use it. Yeah. But, anyways, uh, uh, Right away, I was a little afraid of it too. But after you sit the seat and operate it, it's a safe machine. It is. So, I mean, if there's a mechanical problem, much like with the other drugs, we should look at it and see about getting it repaired because it is something useful. And if there's a stipulation where we have to have somebody follow along with yeah. doing it, so be it. Yeah. And, and I, I want to think it. When you get a license plate once, uh, I want to take it to your shop, get it going over, uh, uh, and uh, can it go in the rain? He's going to change the hydraulic filler and he's going to look at the oil. And if the oil looks decent, it is going to cost. So is, is, it doing, is it doing what you said it's doing when it heats up? Is, does it have reverse or does it not have reverse? What's uh, it? One time it did, it might have been cooled on, maybe it had an arm, jumped in the tractor again and, and worked. Who went to test drive this unit and you bought it used? Me and, uh, well, I went, uh, okay. and, uh, and then the other people were watching. Jim, Jim, Jim. Jim. Here's, the, here's, the, here's the pen on regulation, right? In, in this township, you don't need a solder if the mower is not encroaching on the part. On the part right. On the part right. Okay. So because no no road no no no, no, no roadway in this township that would end up here. So he doesn't need a solder okay. if the mower is not on the if the one sidewalk, not you don't need a spotter if your mower is not on the pavement. Pavement being a like sidewalk, oh, like clarity, right? Not pavement being blacktop. And do you correct? 
Because the mower would be on the road. The mower would be on the road. Like this is this is a big, this is like a tractor. Well, you're, you're mowing the, the it's an over, it's basically a tractor, right? Yeah, it's a nice lawn tractor, right? You drive down the road and it has a boom on the side of it that comes over and cuts brush along a bank or a side. Okay, so so if the mower is going on the pavement, then you wouldn't stop. Okay. Well, there's no, there's, you know, there's no pavement other than the roadway, like everywhere. There's no sign. There's a right. Yeah. This, this is why I am. There's a there's a right of way. Yeah. You have presumably gra grass, yeah. foot, shoulders, and you have and you have parkway. So if the mower or any portion thereof is on the pavement partway, which it would be in the right of way, we then they need a spot. We need a spot. So we do we need a spot. spot. And I, unless, unless he's using a, 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 a small mower, no, no, this, this is a big, okay. it's a big we need a spot. Yeah. What's the, what do you know the regulation on? What do you need a plate for? You want to tell and, if, and if you don't know it all, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, so, I'm trying to. Leathering on the back of the sink, heat back. Yeah. Lettering on the back of the sink. Uh, we, we don't have lettering. Right. Put lettering on the back of the sink. We need lettering, safety, back, safety, and we need the back of the alarm. Those are those are definite busts. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You'll probably get the yeah. on the track. Yeah, it's yeah. not it's yeah. not standard. A municipal vehicle that has flashing lights. Flashing lights and heat back, safety. Yep. Okay. Okay, anything else before we move on to the next item? No, just the um, legality on the title thing because they said it's coming in two more days yeah. for the title, but it's more of a licensing fee from municipalities and paper telling me to get played. Yeah. So it can be identified on the road yeah. for municipalities. No heavy, heavy equipment or farm tractor comes with the title. Yeah. Right? I bought mine brand new and it's covered under homeowners insurance. So, uh, okay. well, uh, uh, if, if we buy that small tractor, you have to check that out too. Don't come with a title. It doesn't come with a title. That's not going on the road either. Yeah, yeah. don't come with a title. Yeah. Get my home. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next is the salvo, the uh, updated fee schedule for stormwater and zoning applications and ordinances. Uh, and your van will be updating the fee schedule and presenting that to us at the post in next month's meeting. I would, uh, that's a fair time. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is the dumpster exemption. Uh, there is uh, not really a resolution around requirements for this. Uh, Colin, I think there's a, a note in here that we should discuss that with you. <laughs> so, so the ordinance, um, um, the current ordinance, yeah, well, the ordinance means that every um, uh, dwelling requires pickup. Um, right. But but there's it's silent as to what it says about businesses. Well, or there's there's something in there about businesses, but there's nothing definite that they they can be exempt from trash pickup. I, I can't remember well, like, they, exactly. they, they, yeah. they probably have an obligation to get to provide a call. Yes, I think I think that's the language. Do we need a resolution to have it was do we need a resolution to have them? Establish proof with us that they number one have service and number two are business in the township. So, for example, it's um the the few businesses that we have along Fort Street. Let's return to the stopping. Something you do. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, because that was that was that was the problem. One of them had a yeah. 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 To do this this issue, so it was. We don't have anything in writing that says please bring us a copy of your business certificate and free. Please if bring you're, us if you're, if you're, if you're if you're operating a business out of your house, which is a residence, right? You cannot you you, you do not fall under the exemption. Right. Must use the township slot. Well, I think that there's a real question. So let's say it's legitimately business. Like I'll pick on the super. Like if they say, hey, we get a dumpster. Do we have the ability to say, okay, you have to prove to us that you are a business, do you have to provide right. proof that you are getting trash service picked up? That was that was that's the, that's that's the question. Yeah. Not so much like somebody's house right. business versus like residential sort of right. thing, but if we actually have a, a proper bona fide request, are we able to legally say, okay, you have to show us proof of said trash service? And I would be surprised if your ordinance didn't already require it. Let me just 
Because there's 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 some wording in there, but it's not it's yeah. not too much. Yeah. 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 We just want to make sure that we're not infringing upon anything yeah. by making such a request yeah. to somebody. Yeah, we've had a couple of people say, well, if I work out of my home, why can't I qualify for this exemption? Because you wouldn't matter. Right. It wouldn't matter. It's it's residential. It just it's your work home doesn't qualify you as a business. And, and then it plays into some of the zoning issues too. Well. Yeah, so right. right. Okay, so Paul Collins looking at that, we'll jump ahead to the next item, which is the first net emergency phone services. I already gave uh, kind of a presentation of the workshop meeting. Um, I, I, wanna... I didn't get you the, the information okay. on, on the, yeah, I didn't the um, so FirstNet offers um, uh, municipalities with specific um, needs for uh, priority on cell phones. And so John, our emergency manager, um, would like to work with FirstNet. The task has already been approved. And because we are part of the emergency management plan, all of us are eligible to participate with first net. Um, that being said, we can get a little bit of a discount when it comes to cell phone service as well as purchasing other phones themselves. So I had asked the, the gentleman who first already went through the approval and we are approved. So I asked the board if I can purchase three phones, but specifically through Postars because there's a significant discount. I would then reimburse the township for the cost of these phones because. This town is very good. Um, so, so then, but uh, I'm just talking in circles here. For <laughs> um, but the other part of that also was a device that would almost function like, like a walkie talkie type of a thing, where there's one device where we could hand out little boxes because we know Butch doesn't like to use his cell phone. Butch goes out for the day where I was on road crew, they just clip on a essentially like a, a, a push, phone to put it push it. Phone. A microphone say, hey, what should we need you to come back to the building or hey, there's this emergency or hey, can you give us a call? This way he's not preoccupied with his cell phone. It's just like someone's thumbs yelling at him, your speaker essentially. But the other reason behind that is in the event of an emergency, we would be able to hand out these boxes to all the personnel, so specifically the police department, fire department, and other agencies, which you don't necessarily think on the top of your head. For example, the, the school and the school bus service to say, hey, you need to not put any buses through town here. We have these conditions X, Y, and Z. So John was asking the township to look at purchasing this. And I believe the unit and the, and the 12 boxes were a total of $400. I can't remember. John's going to contact the guy again to get some visuals and actual pricing. But the cost for per month would have been $29.99, essentially $360 a year to have this available to us, which would make communication a, a lot more effective. But on the other side of it, we're eligible for these phone plans through FirstNet, and I would ask the township if I could personally, if I could purchase three phones um, based on the FirstNet discount that we can get through post Okay. Um, I think the best way to motion so that it works. Uh, so I think the first one, the easiest one is going to be to push the talk. So, uh, do you want to wait till the next month's meeting? Yeah, I mean, if it, if it, yeah. I mean, it's not an urgent thing. Yeah. You want to wait till next month's meeting so I could get, we, we might be able to get the guy in to come for the workshop so you guys can answer whatever questions and more visual information. At least John can. Yeah, from a yeah. technical standpoint, I think I have a pretty good yeah. idea on it. It's just making yeah. sure that I motion that you guys have yeah. an approval motion that yeah. is specific enough that it's it's, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. yeah. So. Do you want to have a phone specifically for the township, though? I mean, it would be kind of nice, but I think the utility of it would be limited based around right. we should call them. Right. And John will have a first net phone. Yeah. So he's the priority. And, and when it comes to those things, it's, it's, God forbid there's a major disaster. He's calling all of us up. He's calling yeah. you up. He's calling up. Al's calling us. He's calling everyone to get everyone in here to delegate the tasks. Yeah. So I think yeah. not to, not to yeah. about, but I think it is important to highlight what this actually is. So yeah. push the talk system as well as cell phones, any cell phones that would be purchased in that matter, um, are prioritized. So when you have a situation where the cell phone system is ingested, let's say there was a, uh, a massive emergency that, that was impacting a huge force in Pennsylvania or most of the country or whatever. Any time that there is situations where the cell phone system would be unavailable to your average person, people that are designated as emergency contacts or governmental agencies, 
things like that are prioritized and things like that push lock system functions kind of like a layer above that. So even when cell service would be functionally down for everybody else, first responders would yep. still be we would be able to be in contact with uh, fire, your police, with ambulances, and things like that to make sure that if there was a roadway that was completely closed or a uh, major chemical spill somewhere or something like that, they were immediately aware. So that's, that's the purpose of these things in addition to just the the day to day use of being able to reach the, the road crew around the road without having to pick up the phone. So, what systems are part of the use? Uh, for cellular phones? Access. Say that again? We're using access. Access. Okay. CAD. CAD. Yeah, so, so because it's a government um, satellite system, you get, you get first priority on this. Yeah. So is this? In addition, or that when you place them? No, this, um, this, this, has, this has nothing this to do with their dispatch stays the same. Yeah. You would give them one of these things. Well, I'll say, here we go. We have this. See, please talk on this channel. Similar yeah. to like, like, yes. 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 Yeah, but cost of the little boxes is a dollar. That's why it's like one of these opportunities. Of like you, you, yeah, it's like it's too good to be true. It's a dollar. We could get sixteen, sixteen dollars for these little boxes, and plus that base unit. It's like the whole cost was something like four hundred dollars, and then it's twenty nine ninety nine a month to maintain it. I mean, we could we easily find daily use for it when, when it comes to the road crew. But when we have these emergencies, so that everyone knows. Everyone go to this channel and, and you have your own closed circuit of people communicating with each other for, for our specific incident. So yes. Uh Colin, if you need to jump back to the dumpster, dumpster exactly. Yeah, so I, I, I quickly agree to one of this. The ordinance actually provides that commercial, industrial, and uh, agricultural users do not need to participate in kind of trash hauling if they have a dumpster. Right, but, okay. Do, we have, do they have to prove that there is being collected and it's not just a dumpster sitting there? Yeah. I, I think that the ordinance implicitly gives the township okay. that out. Okay. So we're good to require that, that proof. Industrial, commercial, and agricultural okay. users submit proof of their dumpster. Okay. So then we can have a form letter that we can send out to businesses as they're likely to provide some documentation. Yeah. Yeah. So, but again, we might have been doing it, but we want right. to make sure that right. we're at speed. And so, so here's here's how we have found things over the years in 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 sorting through paperwork and stuff. Record keeping is is tenuous at best, and we're now in the digital age where we're able to click on something and find and just keeping those records. Everything is now being digitized, so it makes it a lot easier for us. Granted, even that's kind of overwhelming with the amount of data that we have. I mean, there's four of us essentially using computers now, and we're able to communicate with each other at this point and, and figure out how to essentially file this information. So to look through the boxes and try to find it from whenever it was would be close to possible a big waste of our efforts, to be honest. So there's no harm in having an update. So Okay, uh, the next item is, oh, uh, you said you wanted to wait. Okay, so I, I would suggest abstaining from that, but um, I'll make a motion to authorize the purchase uh, made by Irene Celeste for three phones through the first net system to be reimbursed. Through the co-stars. Through the co-stars. Did you get all that, Lisa? Three phones in post are Irene. For Irene to be reimbursed to the township. Motion by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, Epstein. Jesse? Aye. This is self serving. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Right, absolutely. And then we'll be able to give you feedback on, on the service and uh, see how it goes. We, we've gotten, I would say, 95% um, positive review. 
on it. Yeah, we 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 haven't used this for a while. But yeah, we had a similar thing. Um, I forget what what this app was doing, but we had a, a smaller service like that spun up for certain yeah. things. Yeah, make sure that the, yeah the ATMs and stuff stay online. Um, okay. Uh, next is uh, David Stoppy's resignation. It is with um, reluctance and regret that we, we have to accept the resignation of David Stoppy from both the road crew and the zoning hearing board, effective May 20th, 2024. Um, with the, the zoning hearing board, is that something that stays vacant until the next appointment? Is that something that we can sure. so, so you So you need to first motion to accept his resignation. Yeah. And then anyone you appoint thereafter who fills on a file. Okay. Okay, so I'll make a motion to again with regret accept the resignation of David Stabi from both the road crew and the zoning hearing board. Thanks, I'll second. Yeah. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. No, obviously I would. Recommend I think appointing someone of that position as soon as possible. But yes, any any applicant who comes before the board is entitled to a vote. Yep. So uh, worth noting, this is not something that we as board members can sit on. We have to either be on the board or so the hearing board. We cannot be able to vote simultaneously. Uh, so if anybody knows of someone who would be interested and in qualify for uh, doing zoning. Hearings uh, on that forward, please send them our way. Have them call the office, etc. Uh, as we obviously, as Colin said, we do want to fill that vacancy because uh, any applicants before that board are entitled to a vote for you. And do you have any alternates? It's hard enough getting seats filled in the first place. Uh, well, can, can, can you, uh, if, if somebody could? They can, you can, you can, the applicant can waive, can waive that right, have a full board, and that happens often. Yeah. But, but they don't, they certainly don't need to do it. It doesn't make it impossible. It's not like they lack arm at that point, but it's just. It, and and the, the, the reason you want a three person board is because in a, in a one one vote with two people, yeah. the application is denied. Yeah. Yeah. So. Again, if there's anybody interested or you know anybody that would be interested in qualified, please let us know. Uh, next is to advertise on Indeed uh, to potentially attract some additional road crew. Uh, the road crew pay rate is currently $20.50. Um, I'll make a motion to put that ad up on Indeed. Second. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jesse? Aye. I did go up to the high school and maybe some students that are interested. Okay. 18 years old and driver's license is what I told them. And I need to get back to the school with um with basically what the content of our advertising is and we need we need a job description yep. like ASAP. Yep. Um, and yep. that on the previous on the advertising. Yeah. Okay, so I need how long do we need? Okay, how many vehicles do we have that are stick together? To should be a requirement. And both, both trucks are six up. I'll leave it up to you. To be your, to teach them, yeah. but it should be on the driver's test. Right. Okay. Right. But, but, but but most people are automatic. But yes, we, you know, if, if, if they don't know how to operate it, then then we can teach them. Right. But they need to have a little bit of fun. Absolutely. That. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, only the one truck needs a CDL. Yeah. And if you want to be on road crew to help us out, yeah. please. Yeah, please yeah. Say, if you have an interest, please let us know. Yeah. We're always looking for, for good qualified help. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll take the time to each part of it. Oh, yeah, it's of course. Oh, I'll take $20.50 an hour. Say, uh, we're actually, we're not hiring full-time, so it would be part-time. Uh, there might be more hours during the winter, uh, but during the summer, there's so Stuff, uh, to stuff to do in terms of cold yeah. patching, mowing, you know, so, there's there's always something to do. Yeah, 
Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so the next next thing is the assigned duties that will be built off of the um, job description and things like that. Um, and I will send you the the like copy of the handbook. I'll send that to both yep. you. Yep. Um, like I, I took it and started piecing things together, but admittedly it does need a little bit of the organization, but it, it makes total sense to somebody other than me. Um, and there's certainly ready to add or change. And then we're obviously, once we have a, a working draft, we want to send that to Colin. Yeah. What was Robert Duffy's? Yeah. 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 Uh, I'll explain that. For yeah. So, sometimes you read something so, so often, you know, and in your head, and you know, that's your reading, mm -hmm. but it just makes it so almost reading it. But it's with legal writing where it's like, yeah. this means one mm -hmm. certain thing. That's why yeah. it works. Uh, so that's, like I said, I have a good start to it, but it certainly needs to use a little help, you know. Off of marks and off of the um, next is the community association uh, reimbursement requests for uh, several bills. The first one is for the mulch on the playground, two hundred and thirty-four dollars and nineteen cents, as well as advertising for the summer movie nights, totaling sixty-seven dollars and fifty cents, and the yard sale advertisements, one hundred and thirty-four dollars. This comes to a total of four hundred and forty-four dollars and nine cents. Um, so before we really dive head headlong into it. Um, I know this was something that we had asked before in terms of asking for um, kind of approval ahead of time on things. Um, I'll let you guys say your piece, but I would, and don't, don't count this as an actual motion yet, at least, but I would, I would be inclined to make a motion to approve it under the stipulation that going forward, please, please, please get approval first. It's, it's much better to ask for permission than it is forgiveness. So I'll, at that point, I will turn it over to you guys. Yes. You guys were at the meeting, the prior month's meeting, when we went over this and said, please ask us before you do anything, if you're going to ask for money. And I guess my question is, what fundraising are you guys doing to pay for your, nice. your, your, your stuff? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very frustrated with this because... I know you were at a meeting on the prior month where we said you need to ask us first before we approve spending just as much as we are at our meetings and we have to have a discussion before we spend things. Um, I have a problem with this. I really do. I have a problem with you guys walking into the office saying, here's a bill. Can you please reimburse us for it? When you never went to us before you did all those things. So I guess as a community association, you're a nonprofit organization. You have a lot of tools at your disposal to raise funds to do the things that you want to do in the community. I don't want to take the case, forgive me for not doing so, but there's usually a conflict with my work schedule. Um, when I did attend meetings, I made some suggestions, um, and I think it fell on deaf ears when it came to fundraising. Um, and I, 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 again, like asking us for money. It just doesn't sit well with me because you're a not-for-profit with the ability to raise funds for these kind of items. And so I have a hard time approving this. I'm sorry to sound like a mean person, but I do because we went over this on a prior meeting. There's three people here. We went over this. He's going to make me look like a bad guy. <laughs> no, no, no. So the MTCA, the summer movies are, are an MTCA event. The yard sales an MTCA event. Um, so again, I'm going to ask how you guys fundraise money to do these events. Were there, were there invoices at all submitted at all? To yes. Kelly Cox, five for one version. We currently are selling nuts. If you're interested in buying any, let me know. We bought nuts. We currently are selling sandwiches for Justinos. We have tickets if you would rather do that than purchase a sandwich. We do the car show for fundraising outreach. Those are our events. We have about seven members to our committee, me being the youngest. Most members are 75 or older. Do you sell tickets to movies? No, we do not. Movie is free. That's an outreach event. We want to beautify the township. We want to bring people into the township. So the movies are pretty. We sell hot dogs and popcorn and um, 
again, it's not, movies are not a fundraising event, it's more of an outreach event. Um, the mulch is to beautify right and hold them down. And I personally, and I have not talked to anybody on MTC about this, I think we're at the point, let the township from this mulch. You have the equipment to get the mulch back here to us. Yeah. And then we can help work on the mulch. Yeah, no, no objection. I think we need any of us up here. That's correct. Yeah. Beverly has been diligently working on mulch. I don't think she even has enough of mulch for um, the project she's currently doing. So before, before we dive into the next thing, if there is a need for mulch, please let us know, because then that's something that we, we will directly action on getting more mulch. As far as that, for the movies, as you all know, the merchandise no longer exists. So just scurrying around trying to find somebody that does advertising, which I did homework on that, and which I did share that information with your secretaries in case the township needs to do advertising, of where they can go other than the right people for advertising. So, so where did that 6750 come from? That was what um, we paid your advertiser for, for advertising needs. Okay. That was one time, um, the size of a business card, and um, that was for all four movies that were shown. We didn't want to. And that's it. The movie night's complete cost to you. They that no charge, right? The community. Correct. No, we we have to pay to show the movie. We mm -hmm. have somebody that yeah, we they, can pay to show the movie. Yeah, they rent the equipment. They yeah. use out the. If they still doing the so, entire screen thing. Last time we used the trail okay. as a screen. Thanks for me. Yeah, not 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 to slip hairs here. <laughs> If you're doing community outreach, is your organization says these are the things that we want to do? We want to do summer movies, we want to do the yard sale. Um, but those are the things that your organization wants to do for community outreach, then then you should be planning your budget and your fundraising accordingly to support those functions. The mulch, I think, falls a little bit more into the purview of the township because it's township property. So I am happy and I'm pleased that you guys are doing this community outreach. But if that's what your organization is designed to do, then in, in my opinion, then that costs are yours to bear in that respect. Um, and, and that's what I'm, again, I'm having a hard time with. Um, it, it's after the fact. It, right. it, it's after the fact. So I don't have a, a problem reimbursing me for the mulch. I have a little bit of a hard time with respect to the movies and the yard sales. Yes, it's community building. Yes, we're behind you in that and we're supportive. But I have a hard time saying that we're going to give you my for it because that's what the organization is designed to do. And as far as recruitment for, for, for other individuals, um, I spoke with a, a couple of the dining counselors at the high school. You may have high school students that are very interested in doing it. You have to just get your, you probably have your clearances, yeah, but other same. people in your organization, but it's a volunteer type of thing, then you need to do a little bit more outreach to the younger people within our community, specifically the high school, maybe a good school. Kelly yeah. actually has a pretty good part about that. It's like the right. part that you have, yeah. you have a pair of yeah. Yeah. Uh, volunteers at the car show for the right. high school kids. I did. Yeah. So our website, yeah. you know, we can develop a page for your organization. We can try to do like the donate here button, even if it's $5, you know, a dozen people that, that donate $5 or more, that's gonna get you to at least your summer movie reimbursement. So there's, to me, there's, there's more that I think you guys can be doing, but that's a new problem. But we don't know what we are doing because right. nobody comes to our meetings. Right. Depending on that topic, We've asked for representation. You've right. told us to be representation. Today, no one has come to a first Thursday 2024 meeting. In 2023, I think two times we had representation, and that was you, Peter. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Peter, for helping with the car show. In retrospect, to not wanting to pay for the advertising and the yard sale signs. Just a, a conflict too, because you were paying 
for the big signs along 422. We, we, we paid for it. Yeah. Yes. You did not pay for it. Yeah. Right. So do you understand where we're coming from? Yes. Yes. Donation. Right. Yes. Right. That was a donation yes. to you. Yes. Donation to your organization from the council. Right. Yeah. My, my position is we reimburse you for the mulch, but nothing else because your organization organization needs to be able to fund itself. You have your own organization, it needs to be able to stand on its own two feet. Just the way it is, it's the way life yeah. works. Yeah. And I don't mind donating, I don't mind helping you putting in touch, but there needs to be transparency between you guys and us. There's magical paint that's popping up. We have no clue what's going on, who's uh, doing it. Right. That's, this is, this is right. So yeah, that's so, my position on it. And I think I'll change. Okay, so the chunk works for the community, for the township, and uh, you keep getting equipment it back. It, it, it's for the community, not for the township. And we need to make that 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 line clear cut because there's liability when you start saying you're working for the township. We, we can't have that. It's it's a 501c3 organization that is designed. For community support. Again, go back to your mission statement. You don't work for the township. Can we work together on projects? We can and we want to, but but there's some things that well, I'll be quite honest, yes. MCC is not feeling that Marion Township supervisors are really willing and wanting to work with. No one has ever called me. I've offered how many people? Here's my number, call me. No one's called me. You need help spreading mulch, I'll come yeah. down with the tractor. Call me. Yeah. No one calls me. When, I may not have time when, to go to a Thursday night meeting because I'm working late, but I will make time to come down and help spread right. your mulch. So no one calls right. me. Give you another example. The trailer that's in the park, we were told a number of things. We were, made, we were told a number of guarantees about that. When you came and brought us the bill for moving that there, that was a very unexpected cost. And that was that was a big burn. Um, and that was one of those, like, I, I think we all grit our teeth on that one and said, we will reimburse you. But none of us were anticipating that cost. None of that was discussed with us. Um, our misunderstanding was that you, you would have funded that, that that was donated or that was placed in the park at your cost, not at our cost, because that's your trailer. We're allowing you permissible usage of the property. So to me, that's when things started to fall off, when I started to notice, is there now a trend where you're doing things and you're asking us for the money? So I guess to play nice, if you want a motion to reimburse for all this, I'll, I'll approve it. But, but from here on in, if you're going to do something and you want to request money, it has to be pre-approved at a meeting before we go ahead and say, yes, we will refund you. Um, we want to work with you guys, but you have to understand you are your own organization that is responsible for its own funding. We are not a bank account, and that's why I feel that you're treating us lately. So, so the five thousand dollars that is budgeted that the township has budgeted for parks in the community. Can you be specific and give details as to what that budget money is for? Park improvement. So, so specifically, um, that's example you need to so if you guys came to us and said, hey, the little league is having problems because there's not enough dirt there. Right. We get more dirt. Yep. Then we go, okay, we'll order more dirt, and that would come out of that particular budget line. Mm -hmm. Or let's say somebody drove a car into one of the fences and it's damaged. You say, hey, we noticed that the one section of chain link fence is out. Or what happened with the, uh, the batting cage a couple of years ago where it had damage. Um, or the, the chain that you need the, the for net, the, the Or the... Um, uh, the oh. trick or the material that you needed for the uh, to create the ice ring and then whatever else came with that at that point. Yeah. Those are the things. Plus, we're paying additional insurance to ensure uh, that for that ice ring. I mean, th those are the things I don't have a problem with. If you want to run community wide events, you can run a community wide event. We'll stand behind you and we'll support you, but we're not necessarily responsible for it. So, I mean, there's this fine line between what you want to do and what you, how you fund your organization versus what the township is willing to participate in. You know, I guess maybe we do have to have further discussion over what we feel comfortable with. Yeah. As a side note, I apologize for not being in meetings. If I'm in, if I'm in the state, I'm there, but I've been traveling a lot. Not on what I'll be able to come to the, the one in June that'll have me travel plan. 
but if I'm here, I, I come. But the problem is I've been tied up with work. And uh, there, was, there was at least one meeting that I attended remotely for township stuff because I was in like Washington DC at the time. Yeah. So we were both uh, again, I, I apologize for a little bit of a, a slide on my part because I do try to go to those. But um, I think the, the big thing is um, come to us first. And I'll, I'll kind of play the, the intermediary here for a moment, but come to us first with a request that we can work through details on if this is something the MTCA should do, if this is something the township should do. That way there's not any of this animosity after the fact. Because they're all about us, it's a lot of mixed signals. Yeah. There was a budget amount of money. You don't spend this budget amount of money, yeah. it will be there in the future for you. Well, that's not happening because you decreased the budget amount of money. Then you guys got COVID money. And then we were here, we're going to share that COVID money with MTCA because you had expenses from the car show that we could not post. Yes, that was said. Um, I wasn't here for any of this. I don't well, think I so. so. Maybe that was said at right. the MTCA. Uh, yeah, this is after. I'm not recalling that. It talks about who's reading the part. Yeah. But then we received what we, we could, got, could do with yeah. the ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. And so there was restrictions on that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I ever said that. Yeah, so just for the, the purposes of, of wrapping things up on this, I will do my absolute best to be at this upcoming month's meeting. Uh, Jesse or Irene, if you're available as well, I would encourage you I to do the same. Um, for the purposes of the request that is on the table currently, I will make a motion to approve the payment or the reimbursement for the cost of mulch, the advertising, both the summer movies and the yard sales, contingent upon the cooperation of the MTCA to bring such future or such requests in the future to the board before incurring expenses. I'll second that. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Desi. Thank you. Then we have the receipts. All the receipts. You have all the receipts then? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. While we're talking about MTCA, I just want to let you know Saturday, June 1st is the yard sale. 7 a.m. Sunday, June 23rd, 12 noon is the community picnic. Um, maybe night is the third Saturday of June. What would we read on? Charlotte's Club. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And also, we do have people sponsor our stuff. Somebody sponsored all the advertising for the car show in your advertiser. And um, as far as the ice cream rent, we had people sponsor um, the plastic and things for that. Yep. We are working on Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is the uh, technical items for computers around Salt IT. Uh, we got some quotes for uh, desktops that they recommended that are Windows 11 compliant. Um, was that that cost figure for each suing this for Um Or are they only talking about furnishing one? No, no. Let me just read. Yeah, it's a Lenovo Think Center Gen 3 desktop computer, three point five hours of setup time, quoted at $1,257. That sounds like one out of the. I'm not quite sure. Okay. Um. So we can we can put a pin in now. Yeah. However, the I didn't get I did not get a check. I, okay. That one legitimately yeah. was all my to do list. I just didn't do it. Um. The the pink pad. I did look at the the model for that. Mm -hmm. That's that's a good recommendation. Um. Based on the the age of the current laptop, I would recommend it. That that okay. is the laptop with a three-year warranty, including on-site labor uh, and, and uh, docking station. This would be one thousand eight hundred thirty dollars. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of the Lenovo ThinkPad touchscreen notebook uh, with three-year warranty and accident protection for one thousand eight hundred thirty dollars. I'll second it. Motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. I mean, by Jesse. Aye. And then for next month's meeting, I do have a list of questions for um, the, the gentleman at uh, Salt Mike Roberts. Yes, thank you. Yeah. 
um, around some of the backup solutions that they proposed. Uh, okay. the email spam thing, since you guys said that is a, a big problem. Yes. That's 10 bucks a month. Um, if you want to, I can help. be happy to make a motion to approve that. It's a, it's a simple add on to the existing service. Um, I will be talking to him about um, the, uh, the use of Azure uh, 365 for backups. But I do need to get in contact with Melissa. Uh, she has the uh, multi factor authentication token to get in. Uh, I, I can't do anything without that. So, do we want to look at the spam protection thing that was in there? We're going to move the table out until next month. Let's see it until next month. Um, I, I think one of the biggest things is the fact uh, that Mike said that these are the things that we need to consider, consider sooner than later. Um, and outsourcing things will wind up being more expensive for us rather than going through this company. Um, and so we need you to call on. Yeah. Oh, okay. And like I said, I'll, I'll talk to the guy because the, the support for Windows 11 is very, very rigid from Microsoft. However, there are things that you can do. I could, I could very easily have all three of the desktops be on Windows 11. Flowers, but okay. it's, it's not necessarily the, the best idea. Which right. is why I didn't and do I think with the product that they have us using may not work well without. Oh, it, it would, right. It, right. but it's I coming from a support environment. I understand the desire to have a closed, very rigid system. Yeah, because that removes a lot of variables from support. Yeah. Again, yeah. I, I'm, I, I've lived that life for fifteen years now. I, Okay, um, so we'll, we'll we'll have that for next month, but at the very least, we can prove the purchase of the laptop. We're, we're we're gonna speak the text messages, Peter. Did you call? Do you want to do that daily? Do uh, you want to say something? No. Okay. Um, next is the emergency management coordinator report. Um, uh, Ray, if you want to handle this, because I think uh, sure, sure. in front of me, so. Um, the fire company has a scheduled hazardous materials awareness and operations level training for July and August. Um, John will need to purchase uh, one ton of sand for the operations class. There's also a trench rescue awareness uh, class June 22nd and July 13th, and he'll need to use materials uh, for, uh, uh, to purchase. In addition, he'd like to be able to purchase lunches for both dates for everyone that comes to these classes. He's, um, Request approval for use up to a thousand dollars of the emergency management budget. I'll make a motion to authorize the EMC to use up to a thousand dollars of the EMA budget for the various training classes for a June one. I'll second that. Motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. All of Steve. Jesse. Oh, aye. <laughs> it turns you off a little bit. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Sorry. So let me scroll down to these reports since we're at that portion of the site. Yeah. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> I think it actually didn't get seen. It's usually the last item on the agenda. Are you sure? I have well, no. Well, the, the last item that I have is from uh, SDE for I determined the recommendation. So um, while you're getting that, I, I don't have any other additional comments other than the police report. Uh, Kelly, thank you for making the MTCA comments. You saved me having to do that. Um, other than I'll, I'll make the statement that the, the sandwiches are quite good and I'm sure the, the nuts are also quite good. Uh, so if you want to support the MTCA, it's a, a delicious thing going to the cost. Um, Police report for uh, last month, April 1st through April 30th, fairly quiet month, uh, tel uh, 17 telephone call outs, uh, 25 citation issued, which is higher than normal, but not outside of the realm of reality. And uh, there were 13 traffic stops during that time period. Everything else was, was very quiet. Uh, no traffic accidents, no parking tickets, um, no, no police assists or uh, any other uh, or appearances or anything like that. So, uh, other than citations, why not? Uh, Irene, do you have any comments? No. Uh, Louise. Oh, Louise. 
page, I just as an aside. So um, I, I had called up Lisa today. We got a couple of uh, phone calls, and I noticed it too. Along the Eskridge and William End, there's the um, there's the overgrowth there. So I let Lisa know we can pull up the top, but we can trim it as well. Which are you? So yeah, it's quite easy to wake up. Um, are you able to, to stuff? You know what I'm talking about. I'm William Penn and Sheridan that he did. You, you went out there. Yeah. Yeah, but then there's the other section. I don't know if it's an hour right away, right up Sheridan, right near William Penn, right next to the guide rail. There's like really, really tall overgrown grass and stuff there. So, is it the side of like the buildings falling out? Yeah. Like there's that like barn thing? No, no, no. Sheridan 422. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm waiting on that's on using the boom ball. Yeah, I think that's technically you know, so it's, it's hands on too. Yeah. Okay. Unless one of the if you were to trim it, I don't think I'm not going to care. It, but, it that doesn't care to trim it, but yeah. we can pull them up. Did you did you find a phone number for them? And dot. Yeah, I think I have another state. Yeah. Yeah. We should still call. Yeah. Yeah. Most other years we've just trimmed it. But well, it, it, yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. yeah. they come out to yeah. it, they chopped off the the tall poppy peaks sign. They just on. So other than that, no. thank you, Lisa. Yeah, actually, I didn't look because we came in right away. I called and took care. Yeah, it's was needed to be done, right? Uh, uh, I the weeds as high as the car. Yeah. The, I think it was my good. Yeah. And yeah. And I would need to just drive the tractor. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. But when I can use the boot bar ones, I can reach over the yeah. bar. But also, you can pull that dot too. I'll make sure you get the number. Let's give them a call. Let them know. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I need to use the boot bar. Yeah, we need to have somebody well, behind yeah. it too. Once, once it's Paperwork is finalized. You also need to make sure that it's working properly because, because if we use it and it's already damaged, now we can be damaged more. Yeah. Right. And then I have one other question for you while I have you on here. Did you get anywhere with targeting the culverts in the township? Did you get any of that done or looking at the culverts? Culverts. Oh, it's the culverts. I'm still working on it. I don't even down, but I'm any more specifics exactly where they are. Okay, how many did you look at so far? Well, uh, there are uh, maybe 15 on my roads. Huh. I went over all the roads twice. Yeah. So there, there's a map, but we want to ask. You just want to get things. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank well, you. One of the things that I think we should do, since we have them to run, is take, uh, like, essentially, like, aerial survey of additions to culverts that way we can kind of uh, target it is the right word to be able to carry year over year to see if we have degradation it's happening so yeah 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 i already talked to john about going out okay so we'll have to we'll have to figure out when we could all go out together so we can get some good images and, and catalog those images so that we have that, that record year to year we'll make sure lisa Prompt you on a daily basis of finishing up that list and then getting it over to us so that we have it. Yeah, I, I drove all the roads and put my thermometer zero to exactly where each hole is. Yeah. Each road. I want to hold your GPS for it. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 And that's. I, I, I don't want to live, but I don't want to. All sorted off. Yeah, okay. you have a list that makes sense to push. Oh, no, that's the best. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I mean. I have some on the side. It's like with that GIS system, I want to yeah. get GPS for it. Yeah. It's nice. Um, okay. Uh, Jesse, you have any comments? Okay. Uh, Colin. Nothing. Mike? Uh, well, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you for having me here tonight. Uh, Glad to be here to the township. Uh, I was actually out of the township and uh, 13 told me earlier to a site visit for their stormwater water basin. Uh, the basin itself looks good, but there are some things they need to do before they close off that permit. Um, and also, New Spruce Markets has submitted a plan that's under review right now. We've uh, submitted a letter. It's 
not going to get the next kind of efficiency. Okay. So that's it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, glad to have you here too. Uh, Lisa. Uh, just to remind everybody about Civic Ready. Um, if anybody has any questions, please call the office. We can help you on the Civic Ready. That's about the notifications. And also, um, when we're doing the minutes, if everybody can please speak a little bit louder and clear when they're walking, um, we're having a hard time picking it up and we have to have all have everything. I got a microphone on. Sometimes somebody's coming up and they're not talking loud at the time. There's a microphone there, Al, but it's, some people's voices carry really loud. It used to be right here. Well, it is a yeah, there's a there's a bigger bar on the other side of it. Uh, the problem is we were getting a lot of the, the audience talking on yeah. the microphone when it was sitting on the podium. Yeah. It's kind of the opposite direction of that. So uh, it's just kind of, I think, Lisa's ask as a general one, if you come up to make a comment, please make sure that you, you speak. A little bit loud, yeah, loudly. 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 We appreciate it. Actually. Oh, we hear you loud. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, just if, when making a comment, please be sure with us. What's the difference between uh, township and community? You mean the actual like legal designation of that? Because like the. Yes, and it all so one. Yes and no. Community? So the community is the, the members of. The township. The township, though, if you want to split hairs on this, is the legal entity. The township is what is required uh, and responsible for things like fire safety, police, roadways. Um, the two oftentimes are commingled, but they are two very legally distinct things. So that's kind of the, uh, please, anybody else stop me from doing that in the service, but um, the two are at least synonymous, but they're not the same. Here's one. Yeah. Somebody brought it up. Yeah. What's the difference? Yeah. Uh, Kelly. Two things. Um, thank you for approving those expenses. Mm -hmm. And it's like, can we have a little introduction? Oh, yeah, I, I apologize. So, uh, Chuck, our previous engineer, uh, resigns suddenly and kind of unexpectedly. Uh, Mike Bingham is another lead engineer from SDE and he's going to be serving as the township engineer. Yeah. And this is not my first rodeo. I've been representing municipalities for the better part of a dozen years. Um, so, very first as well. We, we actually worked together in other municipalities on the already. It should be a seamless. Yeah, we're, 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 we're in good hands. Uh, we all knew and loved Chuck, but we'll, I'm sure with time, no one loved Mike. So, you want to? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> split them up. Uh, okay. Seeing no more items on the agenda and no need for executive session. I will uh, we have to need executive session. Yes. yes. Then uh, at this point, I will uh, I guess I will recess. 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 Uh, for executive session. Thank you everyone for coming out and uh, stay safe and we'll see you next month.